Hi, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa in the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And um, in this particular video, um, you know, I asked the question, why, why is the Northern Pacific Ocean water uh, so, so damn hot? Um, or another question would be, you know, why, why is all the marine life in the uh, Northern Pacific, uh, uh, you know, under huge stress? You know, we're getting mass uh, beachings of, of different uh, animals. I mean, the water's just too hot. There's not enough food. You know, we're getting migration of um, where, where uh, marine life uh, commonly um, resides, we're getting migration to different areas, etc. So that, that, that's the key question. Um, you know, and it's not just the, uh, the El Nino. I mean, this, this El Nino is looking to be probably the strongest ever in recorded uh, history. Um, it normally peaks um, in, in uh, towards the end of the year, December or so, and uh, so we've still got quite a bit of time, um, and I can show, so what I'll, what I'll be doing is I'll show various um, images of, of what's going on, and I think the bottom line is that the Arctic um, temperature amplification um, is really severely um, changed the ocean current, so the ocean currents that used to travel far north in the Pacific and then overturning, overturn, call it the Pimoc Pacific Meridional Overturning Circulation, um, is has changed and uh, we're getting the, the, the water pooling and collecting, the warm water pooling and collecting in the uh, North Pacific. So I'll talk about all the system ramifications of that. Um, so let me uh, go to my data. Um, you'll have to bear with me for a second, um, and, uh, okay, uh, here we go. Okay, I'll let you look at this for a second. This is data from today. Notice the North Pacific, 0.92 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Um, I'll just take a second here to put up a screen on my light so that we don't get glare. Okay, that should help. Okay, so basically, um, this is a climate reanalyzer, as I've talked about before. Um, so what you can see is, um, and if you just click on the, um, so just Google climate reanalyzer, go today's weather, and I'm going sea surface temperature anomaly. And if you just click on this, you can go to various parts of the planet and see what's happening. So we're focusing on the Pacific. So this warm, normally what happens is there's trade winds blowing across this way. So the warm water pools up here. Um, with the El Nino, those trade winds decrease or reverse direction. So the water sloshes across the Pacific, piling up over here off South America. Um, so this is uh, what's happening with the ENSO. But We've, been, we've seen this um, warm water up in this area and also warm water up in here. And there's actually, um, some scientists have actually turned, termed this the uh, Pacific, uh, the blob, the Pacific Ocean blob or the Ridiculously Resilient Ridge, RRR. You know, when you, ha when you hear these sort of terms expressed by scientists, the blob, you know, clearly they don't, they don't have uh, too much of a clue as to what's going on, you know, what's really causing this sort of thing. Um, so I started doing some um, investigation. So this is uh, still underway. I may, you know, I reserve the right to do a video tomorrow and say I was completely wrong in this video. But, uh, you know, hopefully that won't happen. So um, I started to look at various papers, uh, slowdown of the meridional overturning circulation in the upper Pacific Ocean. Um, this paper is, um, I don't remember the year of this, it's like 2002, okay? So I can't find um, a lot of good um, recent uh, papers on this type of topic, but there is 
We're in a low returning circulation in the in the Pacific at high latitude. Um, the warm surface water cools down, um, gets saltier, um, sinks to the ocean floor and then recycles back south. Um, analogously to the AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or the SMOC, the Southern Meridional Overturning Circulation. Now Hansen in his landmark re paper recently talked about AMOC changes and, and um, SMOC changes, but didn't mention at all the what's going on in the Pacific, didn't relate what's happening in... So basically in that paper, um, the because the Arctic is warming so much, there's lots of meltwater off Greenland, it's creating a cold pool of ocean water south of Greenland. The AMOC slows down, carries the warm water more across the Atlantic in a more southerly location. Um, and then there's implications to the SMOC, um, the Southern Meridional Overturning Circulation, slows down, there's more warm water uh, deep down one or two kilometers, which then ex exacerbates uh, uh, ice melting there. So um, so anyway, I'm looking at, so there's this paper, um, they used to call it um, the anchovy sardine cycle, the relating the Pacific decadal oscillation. Um, so there's a cold period and then a warm period in the cold period, um, you, you know, you get lots of anchovies here, they like it colder, and sardines here, so it oscillates. So this is also the, the PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation. So there's talk about that type of thing. Um, so I read up, you know, a lot on the Kuroshio Current, which is the like the Gulf Stream, so it's the northerly current coming off Japan and then crossing the Pacific, um, and the variability of the Kuroshio, and so on. Okay, so basically, um, what I think has been happening here is that the um, this is the Earth Null School view. So you can see this is the temperature anomaly. Um, very warm temperatures here, um, three, four degrees warmer than normal. This this warm blob is associated with the ongoing drought in California. This has been a persistent feature for for a number of years now. So what might be causing that? Well, the Kuroshio current comes up here off Japan, and normally it goes further north, um, but it's actually, um, not, that's not actually happening. It's moving more, it's, it's not moving as northerly, so it's coming across. So I think it's feeding warm water. I think a lot of the warm water is being fed across, um, adding water to these warm pools here and also to here. I mean, this could also be, you know, th this was very prominent before the the El Nino formed. This has developed since, um, you know, it was, there were features, some of it was there, but it, it's been strengthened definitely by the, the El Nino. So maybe some of the warm water that would normally come this way is, is coming up here. Um, there is some cold water regions here, which is uh, escaped from the Arctic Ocean. But the gist is that the Arctic is warmed like crazy, uh, so the temperature difference between the Arctic and the equator is lower, so the ocean currents don't carry as much heat up to the Arctic, because the Arctic's warming by itself, because it's darkening. The albedo is reduced from 52 to 48 percent. So there's more heat that comes across here and gets trapped. Um, so this is a view of the absolute temperatures, um, sea surface temperatures, and you can see how warm areas are. I mean, there's a couple of warm pools here, you know, 30, almost 30 degrees Celsius, 31 degrees Celsius, but the warm water is extending all the way up, um, you know, all the way up into the Arctic. Um, so this is, uh, what's happening. This is a sea surface height. So um this is what what it is now so it, what's interesting is that you can see that the water is colder here the sea surface height is actually lower um it's over this is a centimeter so it's 1.2 meters or more lower here the surface of the ocean than it and here it's uh 0.2 uh, meters higher here um so it's almost like a waterfall the water wants to run from here into the arctic 
and then back down here. So that's the kind of flow that we're getting. So if the if Pacific much warmer because of the slowing Pacific meridional overturning circulation is very bad news for the Arctic. It initially warms because of the Arctic uh, uh, albedo change and then once it warms it's a feedback because more water is ported in. Um, this is a, a view of uh, sea surface height uh, from 2012, so there's not much difference, but it looks like the depth is, the, the gradient is increasing, so the water flow uh, will, will increase into the Arctic. Um, this shows um, how it varies over a year. So you can see, um, this is over the last year, you know, you can see what, that there's, there is fluctuations because as uh, meteorology, as you get um, cyclones going through, uh, they, they lower the uh, pressure over the water, causing the sea surface height to raise and so on. So there is fluctuation. Um, this is uh, sea surface temperature over the last year. And what you can see is um, that as, so we're in um, February, so as the sea ice starts to uh, uh, decrease, then you get the warm water starting to infiltrate in. So watch this particular region. So you can see the warm water, this is eight degree water, the light blue, and it starts to come in uh, right here. And then that's when we lost a huge chunk of the uh, sea ice, the thicker sea ice, um, as I pointed out in an earlier video. Um, and then this is interesting because what this is showing is the sea surface salinity. So of course as the water is, um, as the ice is melting, um, the ice, um, it's, it, it's young ice, but so there is some salt in it, brine pockets, etc. But when it, but it's, it, it's not as much as in the ocean, which is the ocean average is 35 uh, PSU or um, that's 3.5% salt. So you can see the Atlantic is a lot saltier than the Pacific, and you can see that um, the water here um, is very, very low salinity because this is uh, meltwater coming off from river. This is water from rivers coming into the Arctic Ocean. So you can see, you know, another river here. Um, so what you can see, um, you know, this is so this is still winter, um, and. Um, as the um, as you start getting the melting, so we're in March, uh, April, um, May. Okay, so so then you start getting melting. So this increases in size. Um, the uh, lower salinity. There's more melting of the ice. So some of that water comes out here, lowering the salinity. Um, this means this is the Pacific water going in here. Um, because it's uh, the higher salinity from the oceans. This is a warm water coming impinging in here. Um, so the, the, um, the salinity is increasing all around the edge and gives you an idea on the amount of ice melt. So, so the, basic, um, the basic conclusion of this um, video is that it looks like the Pacific um, Meridional overturning circulation has really significantly slowed down. This is leading to water piling up on the surface that is a lot warmer than normal. Um, and this is a direct result of the Arctic uh, temperature amplification. So less heat is being carried up to the Arctic uh, via the, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Um, this, is, this is leading to massive uh, die off um, massive uh, algae blooms um, that are now happening, um, and uh, you know, you know, this is a this is a. I mean, we're seeing abrupt climate change happening um, real time. So um, this is a sort of a preliminary analysis, um, and uh, I'm sure I'll be adding lots to it uh, in the days and uh, weeks to come. So thanks again for uh, listening in.